We've wrapped X squared before. Anybody remember what shape an X squared makes? Parabola. Do you remember the T table points you put in a parabola? It was 0, 1, 2, 3, and then what did you do to get the Y's? You squared them because it's X squared. So you went 0, 1, 4, 9. And we got our basic parabola. We knew whether it was negative or positive one, when you square it, you always got the same number. So it's, it's the same on both sides of the y-axis. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we're up here. And we got our lovely parabola. So then, square root of x, if I tell you square root is the inverse of x squared, do you remember what you did to create an inverse? You did that right on the coefficient. What did you do to the x's and the y's? Yeah, you switched the x's and y's. Inverses switch the x's and y's. So if you want to graph a square root, you take that exact same t-table and you just switch it. You put the 0, 1, 2, 3 over here on the right side and you put the 1, 4, 9 on the left side. Exact same numbers, just switch it. So when you plot it, 0, 0, 1, 1, those two are the same. But then when you go 4, 2, that means you're going over 4, up 2, and then over 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, up 1, 2, 3. So what shape is that? What's it look like? It's half of a sideways parabola. Okay, why isn't it the whole sideways parabola? You don't, don't have the negative numbers. To have the negative numbers, I would have to put plus or minus on this. It would have to be a plus or minus square root. So that would get the negatives that go underneath. And that wouldn't pass the vertical line test, it wouldn't be a function. So when we do square roots, we only do the half the parabola. We don't do the bottom half. It'll just be the top half. But still, same coordinates. You already know them. No big deal. Okay. Now, the other two we're going to do, we're going to learn how to graph the cube. They are similar, except um, we're going to do the 0, 1, 2, 3, but what are you going to do to get your y coordinates? If it's x cubed, you got to cube them. So, okay, zero cubed is still zero. One cubed is one. Two cubed is... Two times two times two is eight. Three times three times three... Twenty-seven. We aren't going to do that one. We are not counting twenty-seven boxes. Okay? Not doing twenty-seven boxes. I can't on my graph paper do twenty-seven boxes. So, you're only going to plot 0, 0, 1, 1, and then 2 over 8 up. There is a difference, though. What happens on the negative side? Because if I made that negative 1 and negative 2, what happens when you cube negative 1? Negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. Three negatives will make a negative. So negative 2 will give you negative. So when you go on the negative side, when you go over left 1, you're going to go down 1. Left 2 is going to be down 8. So when you go to the negative side, you just do negative. Well, does it look like any shape we've ever seen? It actually, in math, it has no name. It's very bad. It doesn't get a name. But many, many, many moons ago, my students said it needed a name. And ever since we named it, I don't have any trouble with people forgetting it. Before we named it, I could never get them to remember it. So somebody looked and said, well, it's a squiggle. And somebody else said, but it needs to sound like a parabola. It's got to have that sound. So it's a scrabbler. Parabola. Squiggle, parabola, it's a parabola. 
So it works. We named it. Now no one ever forgets it. But do not go to college and tell a teacher that it's a Scrabble or they're going to think you're a little weird. <laughs> That's a bit of an issue. Okay. The good news is to get cube root, the way if you want to graph cube root, it's the same thing as square root. Just switch the columns. Put the 0, 1, 2 on the right. Put the 0, 1, 8 on the left. So anybody want to guess what it's going to look like? Crabble became... Yeah, it's a sideways crabble. Are they seriously? No. Okay. Took all my throws out. Okay, so yes, it's 1, 1. You're going to have to count over 8 up to, I forget, because see, the other classes always go on past this. We reviewed it. That was me reviewing them. They're just still going ahead of you. I'm waiting partially to see if we have any more weather issues <laughs> and also to see whether... Um, they decide to throw an extra purple bay, bay back in somewhere. Yeah, just two purple bays in a row to get the stuff back up. If, they, if we had lost today because of the possible freezing rain this morning, they were going to add an extra purple bay for sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's a parabola. Sideways parabola. So you have no 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 8 to see your cube numbers or graph your squared numbers. Okay, the part I'm worried about, that I'm still not going to get to do more than one problem here, is what happens when I throw other numbers in the problem? The good news is it's the exact same rule you learned the last however many times we graphed. Does anybody remember what it does when I change x to an x plus 4? Which way does it make it shift? Up, down, left, right? When it's inside, it's left or right. The question is, do you go the same direction as the sign, or do you go opposite? Opposite. When it's inside the function, it's inside the cube root, that's going left for. When it's outside, you go the same direction as the sign, but it's up or down. So this one's going to go which way? Down one. Kay. You need to do that part first. If you went left, two, three, four, down one, That's your new origin. That's where you count your points from. Okay. Now's the part you have to go, okay, it's a cube root, so it's a sideways parabola. So since it's a root, my 0, 1, 2 will go on the right. Anytime it's a root, they're on the right. Since it's cubed, I'm doing the cube numbers. Now, the other thing, what's a number out front make it do? What do you do with that 2? You multiply it times something. One of the sets of coordinates. Which coordinates? Yeah, you always roll it, multiply it times the right side. In this case, it's negative, so it's actually going to make it become negative 2, negative 4. If you remember, a negative out front makes you flip over the x-axis. So it's going to go upside down. Your normal... Well, since I got this one here on the side, your normal parabola uh, goes this way. So if it's negative, it'll flip and go the other way. So all we have to do is plot these points then. But when I go one over and it's going to be two down, it's going to go down on the right side this time. And then eight over from this new origin, eight over, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, down, one, two, three, four. So now when I go to do the left side, where do I go? I'm going to go over one, <coughs> up how many? So one, two. So one over, two up. You're still following the T-table. Still eight, four. So from that origin, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. My thing's in the way. <laughs> eight. <laughs> Did I count right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. So that 2 
made my parabola spread out. It's got a lot bigger curve to it. When you've got a number multiplied in front, it'll just spread it. It doesn't do it. I always think of that as the walk like an Egyptian graph. I always think of the Egyptian. <laughs> What well, goes in my head when I see that graph? So, key thing, you think you remember how to shift? You think? Right? Oh, I'm thinking, oh, shoot, we got plenty of time. Shut Okay, just a basic square root of 5 minus x. <coughs> this is the first time we can actually have had a function that would do this. All our other functions wouldn't do this. <coughs> What bugs you about that one? What looks wrong? They're in the wrong order. It's supposed to be x plus a number or x minus a number. Okay, you can't tell which way to shift, left or right, unless x is positive. x has to be first and positive, so we have to fix this wrong order problem before we can tell which way to shift. So what you're going to do is you, we need to get x to be positive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor a negative. It's like I'm factoring negative 1 out of there. Okay. But I can't take it out of the root. So I'm just going to stick a little negative sign up in front of the root. Okay. If I take a negative out, what will x become? x will be positive. But if I take a negative out, what will 5 be? If it's now a positive 5, it will switch to a minus 5. It makes it reverse. Pulling the negative out will make the terms reverse. So now you have x minus 5. Which way does it shift? It's inside the function. Inside is sideways shifting. You go with the sign or opposite the sign? Opposite the sign. When it's inside the function, it's opposite. So that is a right 5 shift. Is there any up-down shift? This one went down because there was a minus 1 in back. There's no number in back, so it doesn't go up or down. It, so this one is just shift right 5. End of story. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's where we're sitting. Okay, what shape is this one? Parabola, sideways parabola, parabola, sideways parabola. Square root. If it's squared, it's a parabola. Anything squared is a parabola. So is it a normal parabola or is it sideways? Roots are sideways. I always kind of think you know, the root kind of curves off in the exact same way the root sign curves off the exact same way the square root goes. Okay, so we know it's a parabola. So when I go to do my coordinates, which side do I put the 0, 1, 2 on? Do they go down the left side in the x-coordinate or in the y-coordinate? If it's root, that's the inverse, so we flipped it. So if it's a root, it'll always have the 0, 1, 2. In this case, we can do 3 because it's not that many boxes. So if it's a root, it'll always be down the right side. So how do I get the numbers on the left side? It's a square root, so we are doing squared numbers. So 1, 4, 9. If it was a cube root, you'd do cubed numbers. Okay? What's the only other thing we got to worry about we haven't taken care of here? And it's the first time you've ever seen this. The negative! Ah, come on, dude. Let's stretch down. One of you stretch down. We know, let me take you back. Whoops, that doesn't work. Can't write without something. We know that on a parabola, normal parabola goes up. What did a negative parabola do? It went down. Okay. That was a negative out front. So if you're doing a square root, normal square root goes off to the right. If it's got a negative in front, it will go, where did you just say? It'll go on the bottom, yeah. I need to 
such again. I'm still out of space. Okay, so <coughs> it would go underneath. But is that where our negative is at? Our negative is on the inside. I told you this rule way back when, but we've never had a function that would actually do it till now. When it's inside the function, then it, instead of flipping over the x-axis, instead of flipping upside down, it flips over the y-axis. It goes sideways. So instead of curving off to the right, it'll curve off to the left. Now, why didn't any of our other functions do it? If you had taken x squared and you put a negative on the inside, does it change anything when you square it? No. And actually, if you think about a parabola, if you flip the parabola over the y-axis, it would be the same graph. If you flip it sideways, it's exactly on top of itself. So we've never had to deal with it till now. This is the first one we've had that actually had a graph that could go the opposite way. <laughs> so when you look at this one that we were doing, our x minus 5, we plotted our point at 5. We're just going to curve <coughs> off to the left because we have a negative in inside it instead of curving off to the right. So we would have our 1, 1 going left. Our 4, 2 is going left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. And then 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 3. If you wanted to, you could go 6, 2, 4 on this one because we got enough boxes, but that's good enough. And it curves off left. Coolness, huh? Yep. You gotta love it. You all just. I'll shut this off. I don't know what you think about that. <laughs>